Making friends with acquaintances. Making friends with people you kind of know. People you kind of know. That was Cruella de Vil. Uh, <laughs> how we get going now? That was that was her. That was her. Yeah, I didn't see. I missed her. Do you listen? Do you listen to this podcast? I've listened to a couple of them. Do you know that like it always starts like that? Yeah, and you always say as some weird weird person right. that it obviously wasn't. Obviously wasn't. They're lying to you. She's still here. She's lying to you, people. She, Cruella Deville sounds exactly like me. I thought I thought the dogs killed her. Spoilers. I don't even know if I've actually ever seen that movie. What? <laughs> I'm just. I knew Cruella before before she got Hollywood, and what kind of she actually always wanted to be a singer. So, what a sick childhood were you? Is that a good? Is that like a, a real it's classic? classic? Yeah. I like, should probably. I should the watch animated that. one. Right. There's a live action one too. Yeah, that one. Was, I know Cruella the cartoon. I yeah, don't, yeah. I'm not familiar with her uh, live action work. I used to watch that movie a lot when I was little, and I would always say, "Oh, mom, it's the bad woman." <laughs> it's funny so, when you're a kid, you do watch movies a lot. Like that's not a thing I do anymore. But when you're a kid, like you own a few VHSs, and like Space Jam, I was just watching all, all the time. you watch. Yeah, I no. If I've seen a movie in the last like three years, I won't rewatch it. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know what happened. What's yeah, the point? I've seen 101 Dalmatians yeah. three years ago. <laughs> Come on. It used to be in a certain time frame. Um, so, Maddie Weisblatt. Hello. Cheers. Cheers. Good to have you, man. Thank you. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, so, let's just, it's always good to, like, bring up, like, a little context of how I know the person. Okay. And so, like, I'll be honest with you, when you, you brought this up to me, like, a couple months ago, we were out one time, like, I ran into you, and, yeah. and you brought up being on the podcast, and it was, like, one of the few uh, requests I've had that I was like thinking, can't, like, are me and Maddie really acquaintances? Because we're not. We're, no. we're friends. Yes. yes. But then it's like it's a gimmick, the acquaintance thing. It's you know, like I'm like I'd, I'd never see you. No, we don't. And we, don't. we try. We tr we really do try yeah, a lot, but we kind of suck. We do suck it. We live really close to each other. Yeah. But um, but yeah, like you're a guy. Like I, I, I love you. I'll say <laughs> like I'm. I'm happy to to reiterate that I also love you. You should reiterate that I love you. <laughs> Yeah, to sort of reciprocate. <laughs> yeah, no, but, um, and then it just comes down to, like, we don't hang out that much, and, like, when we do, we don't get into shit that much. It's hard to get it. It's, like, this is the type of thing where, like, you have to kind of plan something like this. <coughs> it it yeah. usually doesn't happen that organically if you're just, like, hanging out. So, right. yeah, like, you're a guy I'd love to talk about life with. So I was like, why, why wouldn't I be down for this? Yeah. So how long have you been doing this, Joe? About a year now. Like, yeah. just over a year. Okay. Um, yeah, it's been a very fulfilling project. There's been all different types of acquaintances on the show. Yeah. Um, some people that like truly I barely know, and then some people, I think you're, the, you're like the, probably the closest person to me that's been on the show so far. Okay, cool. So. Well, I'm honored. Yeah, well it can only really go downhill, I feel. Because <laughs> like, we've already started by saying we love each other. Yeah. And then where do we go from there? Yeah. So okay. just, tell me the shittiest things about you. Uh, well... I uh, drink and smoke too much. <laughs> that I can attest to. I've, I'm you, how are you, like, and I hope you don't take this the wrong way. But like, I've seen you be like a shitty drunk. Oh yeah. Like, how do you? Is that something you're like conscious of? Or uh, I am in the morning when I'm told how <laughs> shitty I've been. Uh, it's actually something I I've had to take a step back and, and think about mm -hmm. and, and work on. Um, which is a sad thing to say at 26 years old, but, you know, I sometimes I just don't know when enough is enough. And yeah. that's just sort of the nature of myself in general. Right. Uh, so, you know, I've had to sort of try and put myself in check. Where, where else does that apply in your life? I think the best way to explain it is when I get into, into things, you know, whether it be working out or trying to learn something new, I'll sort of... Or drinking. Or, dr <laughs> or drinking. I'll sort of throw myself into it heavily, and then it sort of uh, fizzles out quicker than it should, because I just sort of lose interest after sort of such intense... Um, <clears throat> yeah. You know, I don't... Yeah. No, I do know what you mean. Yeah. And that, that actually... It's funny you say that, because, like... I was thinking back to how I really know you, and I, I met you through just common being fans of the same bands of music. Like, yeah. And at that point, it was jam bands. Yeah. And like, I did notice that when when I first met you, you were like really into it, and it did seem to be a thing that kind of fizzled out for you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the 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 jam band thing was was 
<clears throat> I was just having too much fun. Like, I can't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I couldn't. It really is the most fun thing yeah, in the world. Yeah, and I couldn't justify, although <laughs> I just did it in Colorado, but I couldn't justify going to New York for three days and spending $2,000 when I make, you, you know. really do drink a lot more than me because I don't <laughs> drink that much. <laughs> Whatever, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, cost me 200 bucks to get there, $1,800 yeah. in booze. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even go to the shows. I just yeah. go to bars. Yeah. <laughs> just sit by myself and... I love oh God, fish. No, everyone's going to think I'm just a saddle drunk. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I I don't know. I, I, it was more than just just the money, though. I think yeah. the scene kind of freaked me out a bit. Yeah, that, that happens to people. Yeah, and it's interesting because it really hasn't happened to me at all. But at the same time, I don't think I've ever been, like, super, super excessive about it. Like, I mean, it, it would seem that way to some people. Like, I've seen, like, 75 fishes. Yeah. But... Uh, I don't know, to me it's just, it's actually like a very important, you know, it's like an important part of my life and my, I don't want to say identity because it's not like I derive a sense of self from it, but at the same time it is like my favorite thing to do. And it yeah. is like, like you said you can't justify that, like I can, because it's like, it's like my vacation, it's like my fantasy land. And it's always something to look forward to. You know, and I say I can't justify it, but then I do. I do it anyways. I mean, me and Amanda and Laura drove across North America, yeah. Colorado, right? Right. To see for, weed. For, to see weed. Yeah. Uh, which was the, you know, I don't have to take another vacation for... Totally, yeah. For it, a while. That I, was incredible. I find those things really do recharge me. Yeah, absolutely. Like, they just, I don't know, they have a way of, like, just putting shit into perspective for me. Probably a big part, honestly, is the drugs, like, combined with the amazing music you're yeah. seeing. And it's just, yeah. like, the laughs you have with your friends. Like, this Absolutely. is a big three. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, what well, else do you really need? It's funny, because I was going to, I was going to, I was going to ask you about this. Like, what is it about our group of friends and music that just, like, gets us going so much? So it's, it's like, like we, we just we, get so turned on by yeah, it. Yeah, like, are we just mental, or is there, like, something about the community around, around the music? Like, yeah, <clears throat> it's a good question. I mean, like, I think... And that's good, because this actually goes back to, like, this brings up something I was going to bring up with you anyway. I think that a lot of these things are intertwined. But, like, yeah. I would say I'm, like, a, a pretty spiritual person. It's always kind of, like, in the back of my mind, just living in the moment, like, all that cliche stuff that, yeah. like, you know, cliches are cliches for a reason, though, I think, because there, there's something to them. Yeah. And uh, I just find that, like, when I go into those, like, into a music festival uh -huh. or a concert and, like, just that whole fantasy world, it's, like, the 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 best place to see the fruits of my labor. Like, I, I'm, I'm constantly, like, working at, at this type of stuff. Right. And when you're... Not that it really feels like work, but it's kind of... It's, like, in the back of my mind that I'm conscious of it. Right. And those are the places where you see, like, the beauty and the magic just happen. Like, those, like, synchronistic moments and just, like... Like, I had a moment at the Disco Biscuits a, a couple months ago, and, okay. like, they were just, like, peeking something. Shelby Rose, I think. Okay. <laughs> it was going to be very uh, accessible for the listener. Yeah. <laughs> it, was in, sorry, sorry. Exactly. it was an inverted Shelby Rose. <laughs> but, um, no, but I... And I literally had a thought, and I said it out loud to my friends. I was like, this is literally as good as life gets. I mean, it's... It's, again, like you're saying, it's cliche to say it's the journey, not the destination, right? It's the whole thing. It's the trip. It was the whole gym, not just the peak. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I, know. I mean, in Colorado, I was... I mean, uh, Ween, for those of you who don't know, were broken up for f quite a few years. And I, w I was crying and a bunch of, like, you look around and people were just weeping tears yeah. of joy. And oh, yeah. You're right. It's that, that moment where you just, you'll never sort of capture that same thing again anywhere else in yeah. any way. So it's very uh, mystical. There's, spiritual. there's something to like the energy at a concert where everyone is on the same page. Everyone is just there to have a good time and wants this band so much to just fucking kill it. Yeah. And there's something about that like collective consciousness that is like palpable. And it's it's the real deal. Yeah. I, it's, yeah. It's, I don't know. And that talking about falling out of it and then I just hate Trey now, right? Like, <laughs> people are going to have no idea what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, yeah, I... I'm always conscious of, like, isolating people in this, but, like, yeah. it's because I did want to talk a little bit about Ween, just okay. because, <laughs> but I think, let's just be conscious of, like, keeping it accessible. Yeah. Like, my question, bear with me, but it's, like, um, we're talking about these bands that we love and, like, how it, we're the type of people that, like, I feel like there's music fans, like, people who like music, yeah. and then there's people like us that, like, it really is a part of us, like, you know, like, I feel so personally connected to 
Ween, for instance. Right. They're like right up there with my with yeah. my favorite bands, and like, yeah, I guess I just want. I'm just like curious, like what what about you as a person? Like, what does that say about you as a person, and also just Ween in general? Like, what is that connection for you? <clears throat> I mean, I think. Um, Initially, for Ween, for me, it was just something I hadn't been listening to a lot, like uh, like really heavy rock and roll that I, I needed mm-hmm. in some way. You know, it was I was listening to a lot of sort of more jammy. And, you know, <laughs> I get it. You hate jam bands. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but like, it, like initially, it was it was I I fell in love with them because they were really like hard rocking. But then the, their catalog when I really started to dive into it, it just opened up for me. And, you know, they're, they really wear their hearts on their sleeves yes. and their lyrics. And, totally. you know, it's, it's hard for anyone, I think, that I've met that's a huge Ween fan to listen to a lot of their stuff and not find an emotional connection to it. Yeah. And, you know, I just, a lot of the stuff that they were singing about and, and the ways in which they were sort of not, conforming to one musical genre yeah it just it it just turned me on for know? sure yeah well it, it's it's not because yeah you were talking about the hard rock thing but like yeah when you just said that that they just have so many different genres that they cover and yeah. it all has that wean touch and then yeah like it's just the the human aspect of that band to me is like it's the lyrics i think mostly and the melodies like the, something about their melodies well, uh, well it's really raw a lot of it. It's you know, so raw. It's, yeah. It's, it's really... It's uh, so human. Yeah, it is. It is. I think that's like the word... Yeah. And then and then I love also the humor aspect of it. They do it in such a unique way where it's like... it Like so much of it could be considered humor, but they're taking themselves so seriously while they do it that it's just this really interesting like tone that they create. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, yeah, like they... To me, they are very reminiscent of Zappa. Who's For sure. Also, someone I'm just fanatic about. Right. So they're just a little bit more modernized, and you know, obviously, I can't go see Zappa. So. Right. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, <clears throat> and th- yeah, their humor also speaks to me. It's sick and twisted, yeah. and you know, the more you drink and throw punches at strangers and stuff, <laughs> the more Ween fans seem to like you. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we we got into Ween at like a similar or like the same time, pretty when much. We at Camp Camp Disco, Disco, yeah, yeah, in 2010, and they played slapping the bag. Yeah, and like I have this like weird perception of Ween because of you. <laughs> that was like you have to get like stupidly drunk at their concerts, <laughs> and then I remember like they played in Toronto a couple weeks later. And I was with you again. We yeah. subway down. We were drinking rum and apple juice. I remember. <laughs> and I left like in the middle of that show because I was like too drunk. Like we got ween drunk. We called it. And I was so stupid. <laughs> I I, I, like, I would have been pissed at you if that happened now. Yeah. Now they mean way more to me Absolutely. than they did back then. Absolutely. I I that show in Toronto. I was on a crutch because I recently cut my toe really badly and I could barely walk. At a ween show. <laughs> And I woke up, like, without the crutch. Our <laughs> friend Dan had, like, fallen asleep beside a pickup truck downtown somewhere. <laughs> you know, like, it, yeah. You know, that a was, ween show. Yeah, it was a, just a typical old ween show. Yeah. But, yeah, the, I mean, at, when the first time I saw a ween at Camp Bisco, I'd never even heard of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know where I got it in my head that you had to get so <laughs> That's and just, like, my way of rationalizing yeah, yeah. over drinking to my friends. <laughs> you, know? you said that about golf <laughs> sandwiches. <laughs> I've gotten really drunk with you doing lots of them. God. Like, yeah, we're getting golf drunk. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> um, no, but it's funny, because you really you really made it seem like... Like, I just thought you knew. You made it, I was like, oh, yeah, Maddie must know. That's uh, that's the uh, the gift of the addict, you know? They're amazing liars. They can are, really are you an addict? Uh, yeah. Yeah? I, I, just, like, in general? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, like... I, I've, I've been in and out of AA and NA and stuff yeah. throughout my earlier years. Um, but, yeah, now, like, I don't... I, I can't buy, buy into their, their methods, mm-hmm. and, and I... I'm sure this is some, something people rationalize with themselves all the time, but, like... At this point, I, I don't think that it's something that affects me so negatively that I need to, like, take another step to fix something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not... 
I mean, I think I think at this rate, booze is a pretty big vice for me. Sure. Uh, you know, we were we were making jokes about it, but yeah, like well, I you, have you to. get AA drunk for the meetings, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's a very specific kind of drunk. It's, it's kind of like weed drunk, kind of like it's it's weed in between weed. golf and weed. It's drunk. a lot more um, uh, metaphysical. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I always yeah. describe my levels of drunk. Yeah. Sometimes mine are epistemology. Yeah. epistemological. <laughs> But sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt because no. we're getting into some good stuff. No, no, I, but, I don't know. And even I should like I should check myself before I just go on. Wreck on a, I'm on a podcast and call myself an addict. But I think that I think it's just sort of um, my lifestyle. You know, yeah, like it's it's excessive. So sure, but it does... some people would look at it like like I have addiction. <clears throat> well, it seems to me that like you you're aware of it and like you, you have it under control enough where I don't know because when you said like you can't buy into the whole AA mentality I kind of feel like in order to, to buy into it you kind of have to like really hit bottom and I feel like you've never gotten it, to exactly. that to that level where like yeah. you, you're aware of it but you kind of can keep it under control for the most part and I you know yeah like I I like to have fun and it's very rare that I'm like out doing drugs or drinking and I'm like not just generally having a good time I'm not I mean other people sometimes don't have a good time but, <laughs> but I'm having fun so isn't that all that matters uh, to you it should be <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think they would all agree at AA also <laughs> yeah, they'd probably dis- that, that's the mentality that you, that you can't get behind yeah, yeah as long as I'm having fun <laughs> grabbing yeah. people's balls and <laughs> Oh, that was just a phase, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was like jam bands. Yeah. Yeah, just a phase. <laughs> Have you ever combined those two? Just uh, run around yeah. grabbing people's balls at jam band shows? I don't think so. I don't think so. Me neither. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't remember. <laughs> no, I no, I don't think so. Um Dude. How many how many uh, how many seasons of The Simpsons Oh, those are Family Guy. <laughs> sorry, I'm looking at his D V D collection. Anyway. I'm right here. <laughs> my DVD <laughs> no let, let, so let's uh, I, mean, I know I feel like I'm talking to some some group of people no, that it is, don't right? exist well, no well it's uh, it's clearly there is like another element this isn't just hanging out you know yeah, there is an element absolutely like an it's just unspoken that like we're on a podcast right yeah, now yeah yeah you spoke you just spoke about it <laughs> so now you have to kill me shit <laughs> Um, do you have, just on your podcast, do you have, like, a core group of listeners? Do you have, like, people that listen to every show and, and like, constantly, I don't know, give you feedback or make comments or... Um, there's a few. There's a few people I know that, that have listened to everyone. Yeah. Um, I think, more generally, it's, like, people go in and out. Like, I've, I've heard a lot of people, like, a lot of people have reached out to, like, tell me that they really like it and stuff. Right. And then so from that, I kind of just assumed that they listened to every episode, and then I realized that they don't, but like right. maybe they had gotten on the train for like a couple months, and they, right. and I can understand that, because like even the podcasts that I listen to, which are like way better than this podcast, <laughs> like all, like I don't listen to every episode and stuff, so right. like I, I get how it is, but it's, right. you know, like the thing I always just keep telling myself is that it's really just like a passion pro- project for myself, right? and the fact that even some people listen to it and like it is just like a huge bonus, right? so... Yeah, it's like it's it's been a very fulfilling project. Yeah, I mean, like, what um, what podcast do you listen to? Uh, I like WTF with okay. Mark Maron. I like you made it weird with Pete Holmes. It's okay. it's mainly po- comedy podcasts. Yeah, yeah. That that's... range from like interview based to like make me laugh, like Comedy Bang Bang, right? Improv for humans. That one's so weird. We were listening to it uh, while we were driving to Colorado, mm-hmm. and it took me a couple episodes to get into. But like I really I don't listen to a lot of podcasts, but yeah. I really like um, the Church of What's Happening Now. I don't know that one. Joey Coco Diaz. Well, yeah. Let's let's. Sometimes I because there is like a tendency in this podcast sometimes to like talk about the things we like, but sometimes I'm more interested in just talking about like ourselves. I feel okay. like that's a, a better way to like make connections and okay. stuff. So what do I have here? I mean, there's a few. Th- sometimes I struggle with like where the order of things, but okay. like. I have here, like, just how's life, because okay. sometimes, it's, you know, it's, it's really, like, an easy thing for people to be, like, yeah, I'm, like, you, you're happy, like, you, you, how's life, well, that's great, but, like, life is, there's full of challenges and struggles, yeah. and I find, like, challenges and struggles are often a really good way for two humans to connect, 
Okay. Like that, that's, that's how I see it anyway. Like compassion kicks in and you see a little bit of your own struggle and their struggle. So I don't want to like make you be vulnerable or anything, but I'm just curious, like, is there anything in particular? I've you already can, like, told pin- people I'm an, an addict. You're a drug addict. So <laughs> I think that's about as vulnerable as I'm going to get. Um, as so anyway, just for sorry. another class of play. No, I'm, I want more one. You too. offered it to me. Absolutely. No, please. God damn it. Um, I have crack for act two. <laughs> But, uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, can you, like, pinpoint anything right now that, like, is just a challenge in your life that you're, that, like, is a bitch for you or something that... Um, well, I'm, um, I'm working as a chef right now, Mm -hmm. and that's what I like to do, um, and I really love it, but the restaurant that I'm working at right now is not a good place for me. Um, Why is that? Uh, I mean, it, the the owner is very complacent, and you know, despite wanting things a certain way, doesn't really seem to give a shit. And I um, want to make a change, but haven't really found the right way to go about it. Mm-hmm. So I'm sort of stuck doing a job that I love. Like I love cooking food, and yeah. I love being around food. But doing it in a place where I'm just sort of miserable, I don't mm. want to go to work, uh, and I go and I work hard, but uh, yeah, so it, it, it's hard for me to to be there some days, because yeah. I, just, I don't, I, I don't want to be there. I, I mean, I want to be doing what I'm doing, but I just... I get it, yeah, I can relate. I mean, I think people get stuck a lot, you know, like where you're kind of like, you're in a situation and you're, you're feeling like a change needs to be made, but you're just like... It, you're just not ready for it. Like, yeah. sometimes you just... I feel like when you're ready, you just know. You're like, okay, fuck it. Now I'm making a change. But there is, like, that little middle ground where you're kind of in limbo and you're, like, letting it kind of process and, like, fester a little bit. Absolutely. And but, I mean, I can't just quit my job. Like, right. I live with my girlfriend and we have a nice little life going for <laughs> ourselves. Yeah. And I have rent to pay and I have, you yeah. know, I have to buy groceries and, and pay for gas and stuff. So, you know, that alcohol... So much. You're spending two thousand dollars <laughs> a trip. <laughs> a trip. Um, yeah, right on. So, so that's that for me right now. That's a bit of a struggle. Um, and there was also just, you know, I'm not really getting compensated in the way I think I should be. And yeah, I, I'm I, I I'm a little bit of a wimp though. You know, like I I try my best to stand up for myself, but mm. I just I don't know. I feel a moral obligation to like do do well and work hard at, yeah. at a job that I'm doing, despite sometimes feeling taken advantage of. Well, I don't. Th- I I wouldn't call that wimpy. I think that there's like well, some honor in that. No, no, no. But a wimp in the sense that I can't tell my boss like this is unacceptable. You need to give me more money. Like, right. You know what I mean. And right. well, he's a one of those few people that told me he listens to every episode. So if you want to make a plea right uh, now, Paul, if you're listening, <laughs> fuck you, fuck <laughs> you. I'm gonna sell this to him. <laughs> God, that would that would be a good way to make a change. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, oh, don't worry about it. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but you know what? Like, I think, and I've been thinking about this recently. That like, anytime I've actually seen real growth in my life has come through a challenge. And it's funny because it's, it's something we never sign up for because it's like we always want life to just be easy. And like that, I obviously understand that. But then there's like. There's also the part of me that's, like, really interested in self-growth. And I'm aware that, like, that usually comes from challenges. So it's this weird, like, conflicting part of myself. It's like, you never... And the thing is, you don't really sign up for challenges. But you find yourself in them and you're bummed about them. But then through kind of figuring them out and, like, getting past them, you grow. So this is probably a good thing, ultimately. I, I agree with you 100%. I think that at the end of the day, when... When I look back on it, it will all have been... It won't have been for naught, you know. I'll, yeah. I'll have taken something away. And I am learning a lot. I mean, that's another thing that I, I sort of tend to forget is that I'm... Not that I'm new to the industry, but I'm new to the undertaking that I'm trying to do. So yeah. I have to be patient and... Yeah, definitely. don't know everything and I need to learn from who's willing to teach. I think that's a really good attitude to have. Yeah. Like, I'm in a similar place with my... With what I'm doing. Um, yeah, where it's like, you know, like, 
no, I don't feel like I'm going to take advantage of or anything like that, yeah. but it's like, I'm aware that I'm like new and I'm like, you, you got to start at the bottom and you got to like, I'm just like looking to learn. I'm just like very open to, yeah. you know, gaining experience and like learning from that so I can be better. Yeah. So he's, I keep getting he's better. He's robbing liquor stores for those of you. Who yeah. I'm new to it and there's a lot <laughs> to learn. No, but I mean, um, I think that as far apart as, as what we do is, they're also very close. I mean, they're both, to me, in my mind, very creative, and it makes sense that we'd both be in, you know, or trying to follow careers that are creatively driven. Yeah. Um, so, that is, that's, I, I don't think that if we're, if we're unwilling to learn, or unwilling to realize that we have to, you know, put our egos aside and just sort of listen shut the fuck up. For sure. We'll never get anywhere. Well, I honestly think that that can be applied to almost every industry. You know, like you got every, anywhere you're going, you're going to start at the bottom and you yeah. have to, you have to kind of have that mentality and, and people yeah. like recognize that mentality too, you know? Um, but yeah, that's a good point. Like, do you, do you consider cooking to be art? A hundred percent. Yes. Um, but, uh, I think that, it's not necessarily it, I, the closest thing I could think of uh, would be like improv. Like cool. you have to be quick on your toes. You don't necessarily yeah. always have time to like. At least for me, right now, where I'm working to like think things out to write a script to write a script. Yeah, so like why are you writing you a script? Know, you should be cooking. cooking food. <laughs> but you know, I mean, you write a menu. Yeah, and you you know you you take. You take different things, uh, obviously ingredients. <laughs> or, you, you put know, them in a pan. Objects, or... <laughs> you know. But, um, Do you ever use an oven? Rarely. Do, I teach me about I, just cooking. What is I, cooking? God. It's taking food and preparing it in such What's a way food? that you eat it. Yeah. Right. Um, food? No, no, okay, but no, but and yes, I think it is art, and I think that. Um, uh, <clears throat> it's art not only because it can be presented beautifully and look really nice and taste really nice, but also I think it's art because there's tradition and there's, you know, there's a history to it and it's mm -hmm. grown and changed and evolved. Yeah. And, evolved. and to me, that's sort of uh, symptomatic of something that is an art. Yeah. You know, cool. Like, that's, a, that's a good point. Yeah. For, so. for me, sometimes I think about art as like a lot of it has to do with the process. And I think for me, like if I was, because I cook, like yeah. just for myself and yeah. like I, I feel very it's very meditative for me like I'm totally just doing that when I'm doing that you know yeah. like I'm very just into the cooking and my mind is not really elsewhere yeah and I think like that's a key ingredient oh. <laughs> uh, for no for for just an artistic process you know where like yeah. when I'm writing I find the same yeah I'm just throwing shit in the pan <laughs> yeah and you know Stirring it. Yeah. Wait, which one's writing and which one's cooking? I Now I'm just, yeah. I'm kind of confused. They're pretty much in, interchangeable, I yeah. guess. Um, um, so, so, so you kind of, to, to me, when you asked me that question, is, is, is cooking art, I, I uh, felt a, a taste of hesitancy on your part, but obviously you, you feel that way. Yeah, no, that, if you felt that, I think you misread it, because, um, yeah. yeah, no, I, I think about this has come up a few times on the podcast, but just, like, what art is, and, like, sometimes I think it's just, it's different for everybody, but, like, everybody can find something that they can just give themselves to in that moment, and yeah. to me, that's kind of art, I think, yeah. like, even if it's just, like, jogging, or, you know, like, I, I think there's, like, something, it's kind of a stretch, maybe, to some people, but that, that's how I feel, I think if you can, like, just give yourself to something. Yeah, there's, there's at least something artistic in it, mm -hmm. yeah, creative. Um, okay, so another thing I wanted to talk about, and, and you alluded to it, is that, like, you're in a relationship right now. Yes. And, uh, I know Eva a little, a little bit. Ava. 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 <laughs> Shit. Yeah. It's I know her very Ava. well. No, 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 no. <laughs> but everyone does it, because of how her name is spelled. Yeah. But, uh. Well, she had asked to be on this podcast, and if you she's probably listening. Uh, is this live? This is live. <laughs> oh, fuck. She's, well, she's been uh, in the corner this whole time. Yeah, yeah. She was dressed up as Cruella de <laughs> Uh... Eva. I'm sure she'll... Ava. Ava, yeah. Uh, she'll sure be on the she podcast. will. She will. Yeah, we'll do it, for sure. Oh, okay, cool. She, she'll, be, she'll be excited to hear that. Yeah. yeah. 
She but, was very actually kind of jealous. Well, I kind of, and that's why I told you that I was looking for a dude in particular because yeah, yeah. I thought that might have come up. Yeah. Um, she wasn't like angrily jealous. <laughs> yeah. You know, she was just. Like, oh, Are we still acquaintances? Yeah. Really? You, you and her, are yeah. definitely acquaintances. That's, She's probably a much better fit for your like. I don't know. Yeah. Your motif premise. <laughs> your premise. Your premise. Yeah. yeah. That isn't premise. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So I'm in. I'm in a relationship. We've been uh, dating. For almost two years, we just recently moved in together uh, in February or March, and um, yeah, uh, we met on Tinder. Yeah, so you're saying a whole bunch of things that I was like, going to bring up. Yeah, um, sorry. No, 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 it's good. It's, it's saving time. Uh, I'll just reiterate, Maddie, yeah. they've been dating uh, <laughs> two years. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Moved in about March. Uh, yeah. No, and then met on Tinder, but, um, yeah. and Maddie's a drug addict. <laughs> and, uh. Can we start this thing <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Only if we start the exact same way. Yeah, okay. No, but it's, I don't know. What, what am I, what do I want to know about this? Like, uh, first of all, I'm definitely curious about the Tinder thing. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm on Tinder a lot, yeah. and people are always like, well, do you really think you can, like, find a girlfriend on Tinder? I'm like, absolutely. Like, I, what, No, you can't. I've just settled. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh my god, I'm just kidding, baby. Um, <laughs> um, it's Jeff. <laughs> um, you know what? We, we've actually, we've talked about this before. You and I have? Yeah. I, um, I don't remember. Fuck. Quit drinking. <laughs> you were really drunk. <laughs> so I don't remember. Um, but I think that uh, there's just stigma. And, and the bar scene is not our... It's, you know, there's a stigma about meeting people online. Right. Uh, that it's just kind of silly. Obviously, I guess a lot of people want to use it solely for having easy, you know, convenient sex. And that's fine. And, mm-hmm. I mean, initially, that's when I got onto it. That's why I, I was on it, too. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I don't think that it matters how you meet someone if you make a genuine connection with it. I'm not just going to, like, you know, dismiss that because I met them via an app on my phone. That's exactly how I feel. Like, there's yeah. so, I feel like people classify people just because they use Tinder. But, like, that's crazy because there's a million people on Tinder. There's, like, some really lame people and there's some really awesome people. Yeah. And, like, yeah, if the connection's there, it's there. I will say, like, the, the one thing you know, that I can use in the defense of people that are, like, hesitant to meet people on Tinder or whatever, or just, like, seeing it as a long-term thing, is there is, like, an organicness to falling in love that I think Tinder does take away a little bit because it's so contrived. It's so, like, there 100%. is a forceness to dating. Absolutely. But once you can get past that little bit, like, it's just it's just that the connection is there, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, okay, there you set up that initial meeting by that, but if, if you don't want to, at the end of the day, see this person or talk to this person, that's, you know... That's going to come from yourself. That's not going to... Tinder can't really, you know, call you up and say, Hey, why don't you call this lady back? She's really lonely. So you don't have Tinder Plus? Uh, no. Tinder oh, Plus does. I have Tinder Plus. Oh, okay. Do you, do you <laughs> have, I get calls do you from have Tinder. you for that? I, I, I you do, but I'm joking. I don't actually have it. <laughs> like, I, re- I remember that, that, like, feature coming on. And it's like, well, if you want to... If you, if you accidentally swiped someone... <laughs> yeah, you can God shake your phone and... <laughs> And pay three dollars a week, and now <laughs> you can find that person you may have, you know, yeah. married or something. I don't know. <laughs> you may have married. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and your plus is really like really delves into things that you've forgotten about about yourself. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what are your hopes and dreams? <laughs> they can probably potentially fit into that three dollars um, a week. <laughs> but um, That's expensive. That's an expensive app. Yeah. You're um, telling me. <laughs> I got it twice. Tinder plus plus. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It cancels so, it. It's a minus. So, uh, things, are, things are, are good. I mean, you've been in a long-term relationship before. It's hard. There are days and weeks that are, are easier or more difficult than others. Yeah. Um, but I... At this point, you know, we're in love and we like to be around each other and yeah. we spend more time with each other than I, with anyone else. So it's good. That's great. Because, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that really was like one of this, I was, it's a really simple question, but I was just, it's been a while now since I've, I've been out, of, I've been single for like two years now and yeah. like, 
Uh, Sometimes it's, like, hard to remember, like, the benefits of a relationship. And, like, I just like talking to people. <laughs> you're, you're shaking your head. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's lots of benefits. I mean, she, you know, uh, she <laughs> takes care of me. No, yeah, honestly, no for sure. Honestly, absolutely. In a lot of ways, like, emotionally and in other ways. I mean, I work a lot. Um, but it just be because of what I do and the hours are sort of silly sometimes. So she, she helps with the dog and, you know, she, she takes care of the house a lot more than I do. Yeah. Um, people are going to think, wow, Matt, you just like, yeah, it sounds like you can just get a nanny. You got a maid. <laughs> now I've just like dug myself this hole and I'm going to get fucking yelled at. No, no, here, well, you have a chance to redeem yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Seriously, what, what's, uh, like, okay, well, answer me this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this might not actually be really good for redeeming yourself. <laughs> but, like, no, you were on Tinder, you said, for a while. And, like, yeah. I knew you back at, back in a couple we, years we ago. We and like each other for, for like, yeah, like five, six years, years or so. Yeah. And, like, you, you got around, like, you know. You did okay for myself. You did okay. Yeah. And is that something, and I, I ask this mainly for myself, because yeah. I'm at a place now where, like, I wouldn't say I get around, but, like, I'm, I'm dabbling in the single life. Like, I'm on Tinder. It's nice that these things can just happen once in a while and like, yeah, you yeah. can form a connection with a girl and it doesn't have to be like super committed, you know, but there's something there and then you can find another, you know, like it's, it's, it's nice and like I'm kind of enjoying that part of my life. But then like, I think the be all end all really is like being in love, you know, like so do you ever, do you ever miss that or do you ever think about that and like in relation to how you feel now? <laughs> I mean, um... I don't know that I miss living in my parents' basement and not meeting people and stuff, but... <laughs> that wasn't really the question. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yeah, like, obviously, there's, you know, there, there's something to be said for being a young, attractive man like ourselves <laughs> and, you know, being able to sort of have no strings attached fun. Um, but at the end of the day, it, I think... It, it's nice, it's, it's, it is, it's more important for me now to yeah. know that I have someone who's looking out for me, you yeah, know what I mean? Right. And that's really what it comes down to is that we have each other's best interests at heart and mm. we want each other to do well and to grow and, and, you know, that's just something you can't get from some slut. Well, you obviously don't have Tinder Plus because that comes <laughs> with... <laughs> No, the specific no, girls I, that I are like. I shouldn't even use that word because that's not fair. Women are, are beautiful and they can do whatever they want with their bodies. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's always. It's actually always kind of bum me out the whole like men can bang a lot of girls. Like I, I feel like I hope this doesn't sound like I'm like pandering to the women, but I actually do believe it. Like it's bullshit that like we can just do what we want and then girls they get just some it. sort of yeah. There's some sort of negative repercussion because. The, they also like to have sex. Yeah. Like, what a joke. No, it is. It's an absolute I guess they're having sexual joke. penises, though, which is a little gross. Dis <laughs> Disgusting. They are sluts. Like, now that I think about it. I forgot that fuck. aspect. <laughs> fuck them. We um, fuck pussy. Yeah. No, but, you know, like, sometimes, um... Because I am very content with uh, my situation right now. Yeah. Well, you're living in a sweet bachelor pad. You've got a great roommate. It's great. You know? We and fuck. My, I guess we're like drunk because we're, we're getting like pretty. I'm not drunk. So. I, I haven't eaten much today. We, we're, we've been drinking wine. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. Shh, Paul's listening. I have to go to work in a couple you hours. You do. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is the part he's gonna care about. Not like my <laughs> boss is a dick and I want to quit. Because <laughs> I'm like wasted coming to work. Hot ovens and sharp knives. Um, now there's ovens. Get your story straight. <laughs> okay. No, but. Okay, here's what I was thinking recently, is that, like, you know, I get lonely from time to time, but, like, generally I'm pretty good with what, where I'm at right now. Yeah. But only, like, recently, and this might be a bit of a phase, but, like, I haven't been as social recently. Like, if there's, like, something to do, like, a party or something, I've, yeah. I've been more, like, just last week there was, like, something to do like that, and I was, like, thinking about it, and then I just started drinking scotch and listening to music, and I was, like, yeah, I think I, I texted yeah, you. Yeah, we were talking, and I was... Just too tired to come over. Right. And, like, that was what I was looking for. It's, like, someone to come over and just hang out. Or, like, I was totally content alone. And then... And I think, like, that's kind of the... I don't know if it's a phase, but that's the space I'm in right now a little bit. And, like, it would just be nice to have companionship in the form of, like, a beautiful, smart, 
finding woman. Yeah. You know, like that, like I feel like it lends itself out to that. So like just recently I've been thinking like, Hmm, maybe a girlfriend would be kind of nice at this stage in my life. I've also maybe like gotten a little bit of the singleness out of my system to an extent, right. you know, which I think is important to do. I mean, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that also probably sad as this makes me just kind of come with age. We're not, yeah. we're not, not that we're not young, but like we're not spring chickens, you know, we're not 18 yeah. and, you know, have all of our youth ahead of us. You know, there's something I think, uh, I don't know if it's genetic or whatever. There's something inside of us, especially as like Jewish men. We're just <laughs> like we need a family. Sure, sure. You know, I think yeah, no, I think it, I think it's just I think it's just natural that there's going to come a stage when we want to have some uh, some semblance of stability. You know yeah. what I mean? And that I guess that's what being in a relationship should be. Yeah. But that's the thing about it. Like, it, it, I don't know, maybe it's because of, like, my experience with my last relationship where, like, it, stability really was a thing for a while. It really seemed like it would be, and then it, it kind of just falls apart, and it's like, I guess I'm just wary of that. I'm, right. like, conscious of, like, just the illusion of stability in general. Yeah. It, it related to any aspect of life. Yeah. You know, like, we, I think human beings, yeah, we do naturally seek, not just Jews, but, like, no, I know. human beings, like, naturally seek. I wanted everyone to know we <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> this is the first time you're really outing me. But no, like I, th- I think uh, <laughs> there's like we do like seek that stability, yeah. be it from like a job or from family. But like life isn't like that, you know. Like it, it, some people get lucky and it can be, but like it can end at any moment. I think that's just a really good thing to like have gone through and to like keep in mind. Yeah, you know. No, absolutely. Uh, I, and I mean that's why I. I do my best to to be a good boyfriend because I don't want <laughs> you don't want it to end. Well, not only do I not want it to end, but I don't want it to like be some just end up in some disastrous situation where like we have have no other option but we stay together for I don't know I don't know why we would. I guess now we, we rent an apartment together but For the dog. Yeah, for the dog. She can have the phone. <laughs> Stay together for Paul. Yeah, for Paul. You owe it to him at least. No, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's uh, God. Th- you know, that, that, that's a really big thing, right? Like, it's a really big question. Yeah, you know, I don't know that I have the answers. Well, it's not even really a question or an answer thing. Yeah. It's just like you know, it's just like a, a concept that it's like you know, you have. The, it's easy to put off that thing. It's easy to, like, feel really comfortable. And, like, again, some people do last. You know, like, my parents yeah. just celebrated their 35th anniversary yesterday. Muzzles. They got divorced today. <laughs> but, Finally. Yeah, it's about time. But, um, but yeah. You, you have siblings who are married, right? And like, yeah. Are they happy? They seem happy, yeah. 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 You know, like, I, I, have, I have siblings who are married and, some of them don't seem happy and still are married, and my brother just divorced his wife. Oh, yeah? So, you know, like, I don't think... I don't think that anything is written in stone, or and I also don't think that you can ever know one day to the next. For sure. How and, things are going to change. Right, and that's just... I mean, I also, also, I don't want to make this seem like I'm not... I am, like, planning on finding the girl of my dreams and, like, being in love forever. Like, that's, like, an important priority for me. work like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know no, what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want to make it seem like I'm, like, jaded on love and stuff. Because, like, I do believe that can happen, and I, I believe it will. Like, but I think... He's a really good guy. <laughs> if you mention the Jew thing, I swear. <laughs> oh, no. I'm paying Tinder Plus a lot of money to, <laughs> to keep to that under yeah. No, I, I, that I mean... I, yeah, I'm, and I'm sure that you'll find that. I, I think, I think though, the question for me then becomes like, are we just being delusional in a sense? You know what I mean? Like, I'm also just as happy to sit on my ass by myself mm-hmm. and do nothing, which is to get back to what we were talking about. Yeah. And not go out and not be social. Um, so, are, like... Are we just being a little delusional when we, like, you know, um, so in love and 
everything is perfect. Is that just because we need that? People in general, they just need yeah. something to clasp onto because they're lonely. I think there is. I think like we that is like a part of human nature. Like I think otherwise, it wouldn't be such a prevalent thing. Like yeah. it's it's just like it's on everyone's mind all the time. Yeah. You know, it's it's like a it's a topic that it's so, it's so universal. Yeah. You know, and then, yeah, I do think it's kind of like part of how we're wired. But then it's like humans are also like very much the, the grass is greener type of thing. You know, when like you're in the I know. So, uh, sorry, my mind is like really kind of going right now. But like, I, yeah, sometimes yeah. I idealize relationships because I just like think about it. I romanticize my last one, but it wasn't always. You know, there was some shit. Yeah. And well, it, well but that's the thing. Like the, it, it's it's not. It's not easy. You know, like it's not. And I don't think it should be. Mm-hmm. I think if it's too easy, then there's probably something wrong. I think that goes back to what I was saying before with like challenges. Like challenges are good. You know. Absolutely. You need to work at things. Anything like worth having, you have to work at. And I think that that's just something that, yeah, is universal. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. If it's worth having, it's worth working for. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it, like I was saying, some days are are better than others. With you know, with Ava. Um, I think it's Eva. Um, I don't know, we'll have to get her on the podcast to clarify. <laughs> We're acquaintances. What's your guys' relationship? <laughs> oh, you're in our relationship? No, yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, I think that that's... I mean, if I take anything away from from this this podcast, it's going to be that anything worth worth having is worth working for. Good. So thank you, Jeff. Oh, hey. You really... I couldn't have gotten there without you. Thanks, bud. <laughs> well, you know, the crack helped. Yeah. Oh, we're in Act 2 already. You've been sneaking crack this whole time. Jesus Christ. I can't post this on Facebook. My sister's going to listen. She's going to fucking freak out. It. She doesn't like you joking about crack. No. She's okay with you smoking crack, just yeah, the jokes. Just joking about it, though. Well, they can't see us. How do they know what we're fucking doing? Um, have you exhausted all the things that you had prepared? Or did you have any anything else? Um, I... Sorry, I wrote some stuff down yeah. in my little. Uh, I'll also see you what t- how much time we're at. That's, um, yeah, we're only at fifty minutes. So if you have oh, anything okay. else, um, I you know what we kind of we kind of touched on organically touched on a lot of what I was. Yeah, I find that about. that tends to happen because yeah. it's like you when you're preparing your things. Mind. When you're preparing things, it's like how do I know you? How do you know me? What do we? What's the common ground? So like usually there's some overlap. Yeah. Um. Yeah, really, we really we we talked about everything. I was just I, w- I was gonna make comparisons between food and comedy. Yeah, and <laughs> and I, I, hot dogs are the funniest. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Tomatoes are pretty silly. Um, no, you know, and yeah. So I think I think we we did pretty good. Um, I'm impressed, Jeff. Cool. Um, but uh, is there anything you'd like to ask me? Well, I guess. This is something we touched on briefly. Well, I, mostly I talked about it, and I'm just curious. Okay. The whole, like, spirituality thing. Okay. Because, like, I know when we first met, I think, like, that is something that we had talked about. Or even, sometimes you just observe it in someone. And, like, yeah. I, I feel like the more I, I get into it, the less it becomes, like, a something for discussion and more just, like, how I live my life. And it yeah. kind of comes through more of my actions and behavior and stuff. Yeah. But... This is a podcast, so we have to talk about it. Right, we have to talk about it. So I'm curious, like, does that... Because I know, just, like, Eastern philosophy, like, Buddhism, shit like that, like, does that play a role in your life? I mean, I was very, very um, interested in Zen Buddhism for a while. Um, But I think, like, I say that like I was interested in a while, you know, I read a bunch of stuff. I'm I'm a big reader. Yeah. And so I read a bunch of stuff, and... And I don't think that stuff goes away. You know, you carry yeah. that with you. That's exactly in, how I feel. In every, you know, sort of turn of your life. And um, I, I really, Zen Buddhism took me to Taoism, which I, which I really love. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you know. What's Taoism? Like polarities kind of? Taoism is, is the it's way. very, yeah, it is. It's the way. Um but it's it's really a very simple philosophy at the heart of it. It's just sort of living in the moment, yeah, being present. Um, it's it's annoying because like all of these things, I feel like they're 
they they're talked about so much now that like they they really are cliches, but like well, yeah, they lose something. They lose something just by but like they, it really is just like all you need to know. And like I think the reason why because I agree with you when you say like it's not something that goes away because it, it it uncovers a truth that we really know deep down um, that that right. has been like covered up by just like conditioned ego and stuff. But like yeah. once you once you like discover it, you're like oh yeah, like that's it. That's sense. all it is. And like yeah, it's not just gonna you're, like once you once you're in once you buy into it. And you buy into that purely to like organic experience where you're like, okay, like I'm seeing this now and this yeah. is like how it's done. Like it, it's just, you've like, you're onto that truth and like, it's just a truth that is not going to leave you. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think for me, I needed, I needed some, that's why I was looking for it when I was, you know, 17 or 18 and my parents, there's no spirituality or mm-hmm. religion or whatever. And I needed it. I was seeking it. And yeah. so I did uh, seek it out. I went looking. And yeah, I, it's not something that I, you know, um, want to like, want to talk to people about right. like, oh, well, I'm so into <laughs> feeling this way. I don't know. It's just, it, yeah, it's just something that I try and carry with my with myself for myself. For sure. Um, it's why I've always liked yoga so much and I've recently cool. started doing yoga again and I immediately after a year or two of not having done some and started up, I remembered why, because you get to sort of like, uh, tear away all the, all the nonsense yeah. and just sort of like be really, really, um, in touch with yourself for even an hour. Yeah. And. Yeah, I think that that's my 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 spirituality. I I always used to say that like God is like a leaf, you know, uh, like it's everywhere. And yeah, that's how I view that's how I view my relation to spirituality and nature. It's, you know, it's wherever you find it, and wherever you look for it. It's, it's everywhere. There. And like that, yeah, that's the cool thing with like being in tune with this type of stuff is that like there's just like a lesson in every fucking little moment, you know, like if you're, if you're paying attention, this shit comes up all the time because it Absolutely. just is everything. Yeah. <laughs> I, ho- I hope this isn't too big. Sometimes like I get self-conscious about like the accessibility of this talking on the podcast. Yeah. I feel like we're being very vague, but it's like, what do you, yeah, you either I, know it or you don't, I feel. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> go I don't want it. you listening to my book. Oh, fucking read No, I, I really, <laughs> read the book. Read the book. Again. Yeah, no, but it's true. What you said about, like, not talking about it. Like, I, too, like, I, there's no sense in, like, preaching it, really. I do like discussing it with people that are on the same page as me. Yeah. Because I find that's, like, you know, just shared experiences and, like, I can, there's, like, a way to connect through that. Yeah. But, like, yeah, there's, it, I, like, I've been down that road of, like, trying to, like, convince, like, a, a naysayer. Yeah. And there's just, like, there's no point. Like, you, you know. They'll, they'll discover it on their own or they won't, or you know? Won't. No, but I think that that has a lot to do with you feeling like we're being vague. It's because... It's also very hard to talk about. It in, is in like concrete terms because it's very abstract. Yeah, yes, yeah. it's, it's such a it's such an abstract thing. That's true. Yeah, it's not really it's not super intellectual. And like sometimes even when people like question me on it, I will find myself like bumping into walls of like ex- explanation because I'm like, but I, I just know it. There, like there's I can't. Not necessarily the words to you. You can't necessarily find the words to put yeah. it all into, into. It's such an experience thing. It's like a feel thing. Absolutely. So if you guys can't feel what we're <laughs> feeling, um, we're both sending out mad vibes right yeah. now. <laughs> heady, heady mama vibes. Um, the heady mamas and the heady papas. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 I think also like there's no there's no denying that like we're friends for a reason. You know, like yeah. our, our whole group of friends where, that we like connected through and became friends you know we're all i think for me anyways when i think about you guys i I view us all in that sort of way everyone's sort of pretty attuned to themselves and their surroundings and music just was another medium for us to like enjoy ourselves and get blackout drunk (laughs) but (laughs) yeah um you had me until (laughs) but uh you know and i and i think that the yeah, there's a reason that we're all friends. It's because we're all sort of on a same, on a similar page. In terms For sure, of a lot of those things. Definitely. Spirituality and Definitely. Well, what I find cool about this podcast is like, <clears throat> you know, because I, I connect with a whole bunch of people that aren't on that same page necessarily. But right. like, 
just through discussion and, and talking about experiences and stuff, like we'll find some common ground uh, of that stuff. Or even if like I understand something that they don't understand or they understand something in the way that I don't understand it, like there right. is common ground there. Right. Because I do think it really is just like such a human experience. Like we're all just going through it and like there's going to be some overlap. We understand it in different ways. Yeah. But uh, it's just neat. Human connection is neat to me. I, I mean, I, I think it's, it's awesome the way that you're reaching out to people that you don't know and trying to find that. I think that that's, that's a big draw for, for people who've never listened. You know, it's really, it, it is like, I've only listened, I think in full to three or four of your podcasts, yeah. but you always find that. I mean, like they happen to be people that I knew. So right. like, uh, like Jimbo and Sarah, I right. listened to. And yeah, you know, like I know Sarah very well and it was interesting to hear like a vulnerability in people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you do find a sort of a connection and I think it's, it's really cool. So I applaud, I applaud you. Thanks buddy. It means a lot. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the vulnerability thing is like, uh, I guess, I guess that just happens the more you talk, the, if you're in a long form conversation with someone, like it's going to come out because I really, really feel that everybody's vulnerable just by nature of being human. 100%. And like, uh, you're either in touch with it or you're not, you know what I mean? But if, if you're not, it's like, I, it's hard for me to connect with you if you're not, because it's, it's either that you don't know it or you're like hiding it, which is okay. But it's just like, I feel like we're all vulnerable. So like, why not just embrace that? Cause there's nothing to be ashamed of with that. Like that's no. just part of being human. And Absolutely. then you can get to deeper places. I mean, <clears throat> I, I, yeah, I, I can't remember the last time I had a conversation like, like this with anyone. It's, so it, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's interesting to like, to feel those. I, I got, I got uh, earlier on when you asked me if, about addiction, I got like a little, sure. I, like I like tensed up for a second and I realized, like, wait, like who other than a friend or someone that I like care and respect, uh, would I talk to something like, about something like that with? So it's, sure. it's nice. It's a good, it's a good thing. It's a good thing as a human to experience that vulnerability because you can sort of like realize, oh, it doesn't matter. You know, nothing bad's going to happen if I, if I take that leap or whatever. Totally. Yeah. And I, I think, I mean, it comes down to like, um, it comes down to like caring about your image and like how people see you and stuff. But I think, you know, for me, like I'm very in touch with my own insecurities and vulnerabilities that like, yeah. I think when you are, there's, there's like an inherent lock of judgment that comes from hearing others because it's, as I said, it's just like, we're all going through this crazy experience and like, we all have our shit. Yeah. And, um, of course you have issues. Like I have issues and there's no judgment there because like that we're all going through it. <clears throat> Everybody's got their own shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's, uh, this has been, I, I like that we've gotten, like I felt it there when we were, when we were just talking about that. Like I was, yeah. I was feeling it. Maybe yeah. it's the wine, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't been drinking. <laughs> sorry, sorry, the crack. I'm I've quit drinking. Um, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> maybe maybe we've said uh, all that needs to be said. Yeah. So thanks. Yeah. Hey, and, my uh, pleasure. Thank you for coming. Yeah. <laughs> we were looking each other right in the eyes. I know. I feel I, like, do you want to kiss? I, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. Well, uh, hope uh, you all enjoyed that. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, me as well. All right. Cool. Thanks, thanks everybody. Guys. Peace out. <laughs>